In this video, you'll learn eight ways to get the most out of PG Admin. Do you have a lot of connections or servers in PG Admin? They might be getting out of hand, causing you to think about which server you need to connect to for different tasks or projects. Fortunately, you can organize your servers in PG Admin using server groups. These are essentially folders that you can store your servers in. To add a new server group, right click on the word servers in the left panel Click Create, then Server Group. A new window appears. Enter the name for the new server group. This is just the label that will appear on the left panel. Then click Save. The server group will appear on the left panel. Now you can move your connections or servers around to different server groups. You can't drag the servers to different groups though. To move them, right click on a server and select Properties. On the General tab, there's a field called Server Group. Select the group you want the server to appear in, then click Save. The server is now in the server group you selected. Another tip for working with servers is to set the colors for your servers. You may want to set different colors for servers in different environments. For example, dev could be green and production could be red. This makes it clearer what kind of server you're connecting to and even a visual warning before you run that drop table statement on production. To do this to your current connection, you'll need to disconnect from the server. Right click on the server entry you are connected to and click disconnect from server. On the confirmation screen, click yes. Now right click on this server or any other server in the panel on the left and select properties. On the general tab, you'll see a field called background and a field called foreground, both with a black X next to it. This is where you choose the colors to be shown for the connection. The background is shown as the highlight or fill colour of the connection name, and the foreground is the font colour. The X icons here are colour pickers. Click on the X for background and a new window appears. You can choose a preset colour from the boxes at the bottom or from the colour picker gradient thing at the top. If you want to remove a colour and leave it as the default, click clear at the bottom. Once you've picked a colour, Click out of the colour picker and the colour will be set. Repeat the same steps for the foreground to choose a colour. Click the save button for the server. You'll notice that the colours appear on the server on the left panel, behind the server entry and all of the entries within it. It will also appear behind the connection name on a new query tool tab, at the top of the screen here. The third tip is changing to dark mode. PG Admin comes with a dark theme or dark mode if you prefer that. To change it, go to the PG Admin menu, then click Preferences. The Preferences window appears. Scroll down the left panel until you see Miscellaneous, then click on Themes. The default theme is called Standard. You can change it to Dark or High Contrast. Click on the Dark theme and you'll see a preview in the image below. Click on Save, then click Refresh on the pop-up. If another pop-up appears about reloading the site, click Reload. PG Admin will reload briefly and will use the dark theme. To change it back, follow the same steps but select the standard theme. Click PG Admin, then Preferences, then Themes. Select Standard and click Save. Click Refresh, then Reload. After a moment, the theme will be changed again. The next tip is to use some keyboard shortcuts for common tasks. The shortcuts in PG Admin are different than what you might expect so it might take some time to remember them, but they can really save you some time. For example, the shortcut to save a file is not Control S, it's Control Option S on a Mac and Alt S on Windows. To open a file, it's Control Option O on Mac and Alt O on Windows. I use these two a lot when working with SQL. You can indent and outdent code using the Tab key. Press Tab to indent a line of code. Press Shift tab to outdent or remove the indent. This is helpful when formatting your code. Another handy feature with a shortcut is toggle comment. Press Command and Slash on Mac or Control and Slash on Windows and the current line of code will be commented out. Press these keys again and the code will be uncommented. This is handy if you're testing your query or exploring the database. You can comment out a line quickly so that the column isn't shown or a where condition isn't used. You can click on the edit button here to see more features in the editor, 
including the keyboard shortcuts. Finally, to execute a query, you press F5. This is another one I use a lot. The results will be shown in a panel at the bottom. The next tip is about rearranging your screen. PG Admin, like many tools, allows the panels to be moved around. This is helpful if you want to focus on one area at a time, or have two or three areas shown at once, depending on your work. To move a section around, click on the heading of a section such as Data Output. Drag it around the screen. You'll see two things, a blue rectangle to indicate where the panel will be shown if you release the mouse, and a series of smaller icons to indicate a preset position. Within the smaller icons, the square in the middle means place it as a tab within this panel. The up arrow means place it above this panel, and the down arrow means place it below this panel. The left and right arrows mean place it within this panel, but to the left or the right. There's another arrow on the far left and far right. If you use those, you'll pin the tab to the far left or right of all panels. You can also drag the panel out and release it anywhere, and it will appear as a floating panel, like a separate window, which you can drag around. On each of these panels, there is a set of arrows on the top right. If you click this, the panel will be shown in full screen. This is helpful if you want to focus on one area. If you have a large SQL query, for example, you can maximise the query editor. Click on the arrows again to return to a normal size. To reset your layout to the default, click on this circular arrow on the top right. The panels will be restored to their defaults. The next tip is about the schema browser, which is the panel on the left. There are a few things you can do here that aren't obvious to new users. To connect to a server, you expand the server. There is no connect button. You can tell the server is connected if it has a Postgres icon like this. A disconnected server will have three rectangles with a red X in the corner. To disconnect a server, right click on the server and select disconnect from server. The query tool button at the top is disabled. This is used to open a new query tab and start writing SQL. So how do you click it? You need to click on a database underneath the connected server for it to be enabled. If I click on this database here, notice how the icon changes to a more solid black. It can now be clicked and a new query tool is opened for this database. Tip number 7 can help you visualise the tables in your database. This is done by generating an ERD, or Entity Relationship Diagram, for your database. It's a diagram that shows all the tables, columns and links between the tables. To do this, right-click on a database in the left panel and select ERD for database. A diagram is generated that shows all of the tables in the database. The tables are a bit messy. The lines overlap the tables. But you can click on a table and move it around to make it easier to see. You can also click and drag on the background to move around the diagram. You can also click on the Save button to save this diagram and use it for future reference if it's something you want to look at often. The final tip is about copying results to a spreadsheet. Sometimes we need to view the results of our query in a spreadsheet such as Excel or Google Sheets. You could export the data as a CSV and import it into the spreadsheet, but I'll show you a quicker way. First, run a query that shows results. In the Data Output tab, click on the arrow next to the Copy button here and select Copy with Headers. This means the column headers will be copied into the spreadsheet. Next, click on this square in the top left of the results to select all rows and columns. Then click the Copy button, or press Ctrl-C on Windows or Command-C on Mac. Now I'll open a new Google Sheet here. You can do the same thing in Excel as well. In an empty cell, paste your results by pressing Ctrl-V on Windows or Command-V on Mac. The results are now in the spreadsheet, along with the column headers. If the columns are not separated correctly, there's a feature in both Google Sheets and Excel to convert text to columns, so use that and it should split the data into separate columns. PG Admin has quite a few helpful features to improve how you work with your databases. If you want to see a full tutorial of how to use PG Admin, check out this video here. Thanks for watching.